can leave that up there as long as you want, Science Alert. I'm not taking that EVA report. Really not. That will just turn that off for now. And we're through the worst of the deceleration. Backslash Jack, welcome to the stream. Welcome to 24 hours of charity madness. Right, 400 meters a second, we can deploy the drone. Not chucked out by hand, Poodman. The Kalandar attaches the airlock module and moves it away so they can eject from the inside out, which is... Oh, right, okay. They basically put them inside the airlock, detach the airlock from the station, let them out from there, reattach the airlock. Smart. I mean, the idea of somebody just slipping the airlock, chucking them out the windows is, is kind of fun, but... Ah, that's cool. I'll have a look at that. Like I said, I've not heard of Ranamac, uh, Nano Rack at all before now. Awful! Thank you for joining in as well. It's good to have so many of you here. And at the risk of massively, you know, plugging the same thing over and over again, uh, the whole point of this 24 hours of craziness is to raise money for Maggie Centers. Uh, they're providing cancer chair, can uh, cancer chair, cancer care for the patients outside of just treatment and they are a really valuable service and they've helped many people I know unfortunately they needed it but if you have a few pennies to spare if you want to scan the QR code or visit the link we would really appreciate your donations I appreciate some of you can't or some of you already give to to Maggie's but if you've got a penny or two to spare much appreciated thank you Deploy the main chute. I think we're coming down over water. Yes, we are. <laughs> yeah, eating microsats. Yeah. Pick it up, chuck it out the window. Pick up another one, chuck it out the window. And main chute deploy in three, two, one, half, quarter. Anytime now. There we go. Right, Valentina's coming home. I'll leave the heat shield on. Because we know that has the impact tolerance. Seven metres a second, that should be fine. Everything survived. Everything's intact. Let's take a bit of extra science while we're here. Uh, crew report, yep, yeah, I'll have that. Um, it's going to F5 before we take the EVA report. But we're coming down slow enough that we can actually grab that one out. Because every good astronaut should jump out of the ship when you're 500 meters above ground, right? Canada Hump 2 doesn't dab off the UD microsite. I've got this whole image of, you know, just microsats flying everywhere off the ISS, the arm picking them up and bringing it back in as somebody else chucks them out the window and playing catch with somebody out on the EVAs. Okay, 300 meters up. Let's time warp and bring the last of this. Last of this craft home. Send out the rescue ships, splash down in the ocean. And Valentina is back from the moon. Fantastic. That went really, really well. I mean, apart from that tourist mission that didn't, you know, have a perfect takeoff. Five hundred and thirty-seven sides. 
Uh, Wolf 4 checked in a couple of dollars. Thank you very much, Wolf 4. Your, your donations are much appreciated. Thank you for that. Wow, how many how many ribbons for Valentina? Research ribbons, splashdowns, landing on Kerbin, G43, Mac 3, first Kerbin EVA, first Moon Orbital, exceptional contract run. Yeah, Valentina's got all the medals. Awesome stuff. 537 science to spend. That's a that's that's pretty cool. Right, now that Valentine is back, I am going to take a brief break because I am not doing 24 hours without taking a chance to stand up every now and then. So I'm going to leave you in the company of Luna Red and Alice and the Rampant Trio for 10 minutes. I'll take a quick break, get myself some drinks, take a stretch, and then we'll come back and we'll start the next mission, spend all the science. So I will see you in just a mo. Welcome back. One quick short break later, and oh, we're good to go with some more KSP. So, we have a ton of science to spend. We have a mission to go to the moon. Let's see if we've got any more missions. That's the one we want. Land on the moon. That's our first plan. And start exploring Mimus as well. Mimus. Fly by. Yep, we could do that. Okay, let's go spend our science first. Once the science is done and we've got the extra bits we need to do the landings, we build ourselves a moon lander. Ladders, always handy. Beer, also always handy. Hitchhiker container. And utility module for space stations. Um, and rover wheels. I could put a little rover on the moon. Could send up an unmanned one. Let's see how much science we got? Five thirty-seven, four nine, five nine to fifty-four. We could take four of these tiers, just about. And if I go and do that material study from the pad that we keep not bothering to do, that would give us a fourth tier. So that would give us heavy rocketry, propulsion systems. I kind of want the lander can, but... Miniaturization doesn't really help us much. It doesn't give us clampertrons. Where's the lander? Where's the lander can? Panorama modules. Mobile processing lab. Landing. There's the landing legs that we need, so we're probably going to need... Flight control or aviation. Well, flight control we were going to take anyway because that gives us sea line reaction wheels, which is always nice. The so landing gives us landing legs, different heat shields, bigger parachutes. Take that. Aerodynamics we don't really need just now. I might come back and do planes later on, but not right now. Storage tech is empty, recycling is empty. Miniaturization's got a little bit in it, but nothing that we need right now. Ah, we can build stuff with what we've got. Where's the MEM? Service base. Mark 1-3. Really nice, but that's one level up. And I would have to go through... Hmm... I'm not sure what else to take. I think probably the heavier rocketry, to be honest. Fuel systems, that's the one I want. Asparagus staging with fuel ducts. Decent sized fuel tanks. Yep. Still have 312 science left would get us potentially three tiers of this stuff. I mean, I could take aviation and get it out of the way. We'd unlock subsonic flight and we don't need that right now.
Miniaturization gives us the clan patrons if you need to start docking stuff in orbit. And the adapters. Let's get the clan patron. More boosters, says JGE. Alright. You want more boosters? We'll take the kickback and the pollocks. Two hundred and twenty left, we can take that and that. We have more boosters. And advanced construction is gonna give us a huge amount of stuff for space stations, but we're not dealing with that just yet. But a large chunk of this is the um the space station stock alike mod combined with things like Kerbal Attachment System for the joint sockets. There's a whole load of stuff in here that's not, not standard. Okay, 42 science left. I don't think that's anything enough for anything else, but we don't need anything else right now. Alright, so our next missions are Explore Mimus and Land on the Moon. We have 460,000 in the bank. We can probably upgrade some more stuff as well. Is there anything worth doing? We don't need unlimited kerbals at the minute. R and D is four hundred and fifty. That will give us service samples, which is kind of handy for moon landings. We're getting a lot more science, and we can do resource transfers once we start docking. That said, if we do R and D upgrades right now, we're going to have fifteen thousand left in the bank, which is not enough to actually launch a ship. So we'll save R and D upgrades till later. Can't upgrade the next level tracking station. Can't upgrade the VAB. Launch pad will give us unlimited sizes on there, but uh, mission control gives us unlimited contracts. I don't think we need any of those right now, to be honest. Radial attachments let you do asparagus launches too. Yeah, yeah, between radial attachments and fuel docks, asparagus launching is possible. But let's go and build ourselves a moon lander. Let's go and build ourselves something that can actually touch down on another planet. Yeah, let's go up here to stand the command pod, I think. Now this is going to have to come home again as well. Um, we learnt from last time it's about three or four hundred meters a second of delta V to actually get back from orbit. Plus taking off, I probably want the best part of a thousand delta V in this stage just to make sure we get home. We're going to need a bigger fuel tank than that. Uh, if I take the 400... I'm awfully tall for a lander, but... in a vacuum it gives us... oh, that's 2,500. That's way more than we need. Take the 200. In the vacuum, 1760. Okay, we'll stick a battery on top. Couple of solar panels. Do I want to take a science junior up? Probably yes. And then we'll need a heat shield underneath that. is nope, not 1.8, 1.25. This thing is coming home. So that's our basic lander. We will need these landing legs. A 
I'm assuming that on the moon we have our thrust to weight ratio is 11, that's more than enough. Yeah, we're going to get on and off the surface, that's fine. Okay. We'll need the usual raft of parachutes because we know that this can come back properly. A couple of drugs on the side. Do I have service bays, cargo containers? I do have the service bay. Makes it taller again, but it's going to be a tall lander anyway. I have to bring it down somewhere flat really carefully. But if I open that up, to start we can put the battery in there, which brings the center of mass down a tiny bit. And then all the science. So we take mystery goo. Couple of those in there. We need thermometers. And the good thing is we only really need one of these now. But we'll take two anyway just so we can double up on one of the readings we take without having to jump out and reset them all the time. Two thermometers, two barometers, two mystery goos, and one science junior. If I put a scientist in here rather than a pilot, we can reset the science junior. Do we need to? We've got the readings from space near the moon. We could do space high above and on the moon's surface. I'm not going to try and hop this around the surface, I just want to make one landing to start with, but now it's just not going to be a multi bio mission. I just want to get there. So if we put a scientist in it, we could do two lots of this. It's not really worth the effort. I'd rather put a pilot in here and actually have it flyable than try and do it on probe control. Yeah, I mean, that's what I'm thinking, JG. I can put a scientist in it and an octo cube probe for control, but then you've got the whole thing with running out of comms range and all that sort of stuff, and it's. It's a right pain in the backside, basically. That said, I'm going to put communications on here anyway. Um. Just so we can transmit stuff back. We can squeeze an antenna in there, right? Yeah. Just move that so that it snaps into place. That'll do. So we have an antenna, which doesn't stick through the doors. So plenty of science, we have battery, we have communications, we have power, yes. We can EVA to get all the science out of this, so it doesn't matter if this bit doesn't come home. Although it will anyway, because the heat shield's below it. Um, just out of curiosity, what's the impact tolerance of that? 14 meters a second. Okay, that's fine. So having that below the Science Junior actually gives us a bit more capacity for, for coming down intact. What I will do, just to make sure everything survives. Oops, symmetry's gone away. Put a couple of parachutes on the side of there as well. I know it looks. I know it doesn't look too bad with the doors. I can live with that. I'm still half tempted by the whole scientist probe core thing. I mean, I've done it before. It's it's a perfectly viable mission layout. 
just much easier to fly it, and I don't want to mess with the whole lack of comms thing. Not until I've got relay satellites up. And I'm kind of rushing the moon missions at the minute. I could do a whole bunch of relay satellite things and put, you know, scan sats in orbit and all that sort of stuff as well, but... Let's go with the moon landing first. I think that's everything we need on here. Retract those legs. Yes, the other solution is two pods end to end. Uh, not doing that. I'll just take I'll just take Jeb up. Jeb can go for the moon landing. We'll get plenty of science out of it, even without the extra bonus from a scientist. Until I unlock them up. Uh, 1.2 command pods. We can take two of them up. This will do to begin with. Right. That's our lander. That's also our return stage, which has a thousand Delta V in vacuum. So that's gonna if that's gonna land on the moon we need basically to get there without using this stage. Um So everything else has to get us to the moon and roughly into orbit. I'm just worth putting the spark on the bottom of here rather than the terrier. No, I'll go with terrier. I mean on the bottom of the lander. Um, we're in vacuum. 1200 in that stage. Thirty of your lovely Earth pounds. Thank you so so much. Very 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 kind of you. And our donations is going to be pushing halfway already. I'm only two and a half hours in. Thank you all you lovely awesome people. So kind of you to donate to Maggie's. Really really very much appreciated. What have you done with the staging Kerbal? What? What's this? Seriously? Which engine's that? That's that one. Wait, what? What? Have I not got a... Oh, I haven't got a decoupler in there, that's why. That's why it looks weird. That's the part that's coming home. Yeah. And Kerbal is now randomly highlighting a whole bunch of different parts of the ship. Okay, whatever. So, in our. Lunar injection stage, we have 2,000 meters a second of delta V. We then drop that. Lander stage has 1,000. That's going to get us down to the surface and back up. And back home. It's about 200 to land, 200 to take off. 250 to return. That's 650, 700, we've got 1,000. That gives us a bit of margin. Split the drogues out from there so that we come back properly. So that's drogues first, main shoots, okay. So we have enough stuff to get to the moon, we have enough stuff to land on the moon, we have enough stuff to get home again. What we need to do now is get to orbit in the first place. So set Delta V back to sea level and let's build ourselves a launch stage. For which we will need another decoupler there. We've got the bigger fuel tanks now as well. Good. Best parts. Right at a couple of 800s. 
and put a swivel on the bottom of there. 1200 meters a second with delta V, it's not enough thrust. That's to be expected. If I then take a couple of solid rocket boosters, and I could take the ridiculous kickbacks at this point. I mean, JG, you wanted more boosters. Might as well use the big ones. That's 1600 from the boosters themselves, with probably a ridiculous thrust to weight ratio. 1.7, that's not too bad. I thrust limit you down to that. 1.24, a little low. 1.45 off the pad, okay. That's 1647 in the boosters, 1200 in the main engine, which by the time we get to an altitude of about 15k, it's going to have a thrust ratio of 1.1, which will keep us going up, which is the important thing. <laughs> no such thing as too many boosters, he says hitting the max 3 at 1000 meters altitude. <laughs> Yeah, their resistance can be a bit of a bugger at that point, can't it? Um, I mean, this would probably get us to orbit. 1647 off the boosters, 1200 off the main stage, that's 2008, it's almost 3000, it's going to be close to orbit. And then we've got 2000 in this stage as well for the um, circularization and the moon burn. I'm loath to add much more weight because I'll well, certainly much more weight in the fuel tanks because the thrust to weight on this is not going to be high enough. If I'm going to add anything else, it's going to be more boosters on the outside. What happens if we do something like this? Get a couple of thumpers on there as well. If we launch, fire all of those at the same time, thrust weight ratio is 1.8. Limit those to about half. Thrust to weight ratio 1.5, that gets us off the pad nice and swiftly. Oh, you expect land speed records on the runway and staying on the runway. You measure 0 to 950 meters a second to 0 in the length of the runway. So basically, a big booster. Fire it as fast as you can, and then another booster facing the other way to slow you down again. <laughs> yeah, we might come back and do some silly stuff like that in the second second half of the Kerbal stream tomorrow morning. And that could be fun. I'm gonna mess with planes tomorrow as well. I haven't messed with planes in ages. Alright, this thing looks ugly as hell, but it will get us to the moon, I think. That's 3,000. Decent thrust to weight ratios. Drop that, drop that. The thrust to weight on this is only 0.88, but by the time we get up to about 13, 14k, it's gonna be above 1. That will keep us going upwards. Actually, 15k. Yeah, 1.1 at 15k. It'll burn time of 82 seconds. 82 seconds on that. That's going to get us most of the way up to decent altitude. Drop the little ones. Drop the big ones. Fire that engine. We're not going to have any gimbling until then. Which means the only thing we can actually use to turn it is the tiny reaction wheels in here, which means basically going straight up. Not great, but I don't think we have... Oh, we do have inline reaction wheels unlocked. Or in that case, then. We'll have a little more control, thank you very much, because we're going to need it.
don't know what you three are up to. Want to share with the rest of the class? What's going on? Oh, you're hitting the floor with Anna. Okay. You keep fixing the VAB, that's fine. Thanks for your help. Ah, uh, fins. Aerodynamics is never a bad thing. Big. T ones. Mm. <coughs> Again, a little on the big side, but they would give us some control, I think. No, you're just a lifting service. The winglets give us some control. Which, with no gimbling on the engine, is probably not a bad thing to have. Okay. Let's go give it a test flight. I can always revert if it doesn't work. Do I have launch struct? Build the same lines. I do. And that up a tiny bit. But it's off the floor. There we go. Right, so we fire all four boosters. Drop the launch clamps. Release the two small ones, release the two larger ones, fire the main engine. Drop the launch stage. Fire the second stage. Drop the second stage, fire the lander engines. That brings us home, then we drop all the fuel tanks. Get down to the ground pod, fire the drogue chutes, and fire the main chutes. Makes a plan. It's not the prettiest rocket I ever built. It's just basically more boosters strapped onto the outside of a long thin thing, but it will get us to the moon. Or at least close to it. Let's see. See what happens. Crew! Um, yep, Jefferson, pilot seat. Looks good to me. Let's go. Back to space! Is there a science alert for material study on the pad? There is, what a surprise. Still not doing it. Okay. Um, I'm wondering if I should have strutted those boosters. They don't look too wobbly. We'll see what happens. We can always revert flight. Uh, save while we're here. SAS on. Engines to full. And space in three, two, one. Oh, it flies. It's a good start. And we have enough control to tip it without engine gimbling as well, which is fantastic. Feels a bit twitchy, feels like it might flip out if I'm not careful, so we'll turn it real slow, but it's going up. KSS Nicholas Cage, yeah, for that one. Okay, these boosters are all going to burn out about the same time, I think. Although those thrust limited to smaller ones, they're not going through their fuel particularly quickly. Interesting. We have an apparatus of 90k, we haven't even fired the main engines yet. <laughs> oh. 
Okay, those boosters work better than I expected. Yep, we're going to space without even using the main engines. I mean, we've gone straight up. It's a particularly inelegant launch, but hell, going to get us to space. I'll take it. So those boosters were in fact way overpowered. Huh? Alright, one minute to Apo, let's turn this thing sideways. This stage probably won't quite get as orbital. It's going to be close, but actually, no, it might. Seven hundred. No, no, it won't. It'll be a couple hundred meters a second short, but that's fine. That's what the next stage is for. I didn't expect to get orbital from this stage anyway. I want to get close to it. Collapse this in seven seconds, so I want to stay basically flat. Just burn through all this fuel. <laughs> the colour out of jewel with the ground and light. Ah, damn Kraken. that stage just about burn out. And that's fine. Gotta wrap, gotta wrap up to minus 200. This should hopefully finish circularizing us. It was a terrible launch. It was an absolutely atrocious launch. The launch profile was ridiculous. Straight up and then burn sideways, but it's gonna do the job. Coming up on orbit. Or something close to orbit. How are we looking? Yeah, we're basically between two. I burn radial. I should be able to swing that round actually make it work. Wrong way. I always get a radial and anti-radial mixed up. Every time. What I want to do is burn that way. Oh yeah, 74 by 86. It's not a brilliant orbit, but it's it's got us in space. EVA report. What have we got here? We have turbine to water. The bright sides. Bonus. Right, 1600 in the tank. 
that will get us to the moon and get us into lunar orbit. And another EVA report for Urban Shores. Yep, grab that one as well. Have a little else. Okay, set up a moonshot. Where are you, moon? There you are. So if we burn about here. There's our moon interceptor. Pretty shabby. I want to be coming in other side. So that when I slow down I'm actually slowing down in the same direction of rotation as the moon, which means I get the moon's rotation working for me, not against me. So if I go Like that. Basically equatorial, pretty close. Stop it. There we go. That'll do for starters. We can tweak it on the way up. And that's 856 meters a second. We have 1600 in the tank. So yeah, we have enough to decelerate at the other end as well and get ourselves into moon orbit. And actually start the landing burn as well, which is perfect because that means we can save a bit more of this thousand for getting home. Okay. Put ourselves roughly on our target marker. That's the direction we need to burn to actually make the trip to the moon. And then let's time warp round to burn time. And this burn should be basically prograded. It's basically going to set us on the yellow marker there. Give or take. The 1 minute 40 burn, that's quite a hefty chunk of burn time, but that's not a problem. So we just start the burn at T minus 50. It's because we've got a fairly small engine here, we've only got a terrier on, terrier on the back of this with quite a lot of fuel to carry around. I'm still not doing that material study, I'm saving that for the moon surface. 30 seconds to burn. Burn in four, three, two, one. Just as the sun comes up. That's pretty. Worth a screenshot. It's just annoying that the screenshot button for Steam is the same as the aerodynamic forces overlay for the Kerbal. So you're not having to turn it off again every time. And I think that you look, the moon should be rising in a second as well. Make sure we're still sat right on the target node. Moon. Moon should be appearing any second, I would have thought. Almost there. 250 meters a second to go. Twenty seconds of burn time.
0.7 seconds off. That's that's pretty close. And there's our lunar intercept. So we'll head out this way. Come around the moon. If we carried on, we're getting flung out all the way out towards Mimus, but we'll make correction burns and put ourselves in lunar orbit. EVA report from Kevin's Deserts, one we haven't got yet. It's alright doing that material study. So we've got 740 meters a second in the delta V left in this stage. That's going to slow us down at the far end quite easily. I think it's a couple of hundred to slow down at the moon. And we can burn off a lot of our excess speed for landing with that as well, and then just ditch that stage into the moon. No more space junk. Perfect. Got to leave a hole, but it's not space junk. Right. Let's head for the moon, and we'll make correction burns along the way. What tiny bit we need to. Just because I want to just bring our periapsis down a little bit. So that the um, burn for orbit is much more effective. 29 is a good height. 29.30 kilometers. I think the highest mountain on the moon is about 7 kilometers high, so you don't want to go much lower than this, but give us a bit of, a bit of breathing space. And that's going to cost us a whole 10 meters a second. Perfect. All right, everybody wave Kevin goodbye. Turn ourselves around to this new target marker. And when you're this far out, it really doesn't matter where you make this burn. I mean, it says node minus 40 seconds, but you could do this three or five, three or four minutes either side. It would make naff or difference because you're so far away from from the actual system. So let's go ahead and do that. That was accurate, surprisingly accurate, given my general um, devil may care attitude to that burn. Didn't even try and do it on reduced engine thrust. Okay, we're coming to the moon at 39 kilometers up. 700 meters a second in the tank, that's going to get us into orbit. I still feel like I've forgotten something. I've got this nagging feeling something's wrong with this ship, but I can't see anything desperately wrong with it right now. Just that general panic that something's got screwed up. Oh, we'll find out when we get there. Let's save that. Let's... Climb up and where is the moon? Moon, where you gone? Maybe right there somewhere. Ah, of course, if it's sitting, oh, there it is, sitting right, right in front of the sun. But I couldn't see it. We're looking at the dark side. Might even get an eclipse at some point soon. We will. There you go, bonus eclipse. If I want to show off insertion burn direct into landing in the far side crater. Yeah, let's not let's not push it. GG. I could I could try and suicide burn from here, but I think we'll put ourselves in orbit first and then judge the landing rather than trying to go direct descent from here. It'll be fun, but uh, yeah, I'm no Scott Manley. <laughs> yes, it is what Jeb would do, but Jeb's not in charge of this mission, I am. I've disabled the throttle controls inside the ship. Not having him fly in this mission, I know how this goes. Okay, periaps, ad maneuver.
I mean, there's the far side crater. We can make the burn from, from periaps. And that's going to cost us 290 meters a second. We can then burn off the rest of this stage. Around about here. Bring out the landing legs, drop it in. Yeah, what the hell, let's try it. Alright, it's not an insertion burn, it's an extra burn at the moon, but it's next best thing, right? Close enough. S5 in case it all goes horribly, horribly wrong. And let's make it a straight D orbit burn. Yeah, 